Lagrangian is another way you can find the equation of motion with a <coughs> generalized coordinates. What are the, what are the general, generalized coordinates? I'll let you know in a bit, or probably I explain a little bit in the last lecture. Like in this case, the generalized coordinates are those which completely define the motion of the dynamic system. For example, this is this needs just X, which is the displacement of this um, body, and this is the angular displacement of this pendulum. Uh, I will explain more in a bit, but let's focus on what is uh, Lagrange Lagrangian. What is L? So if you take a look, this L, this L is also known as Lagrangian. And L is the kinetic energies, all the kinetic energies represented by letter K minus P, where K equals to the kinetic energies um, of masses. And potential energy is potential energy of things and gravity. And D stands for dissipation energy, and the dissipation is half. For the damper, this is half C, uh, V or X dot square. This is the power dissipation. Or energy dissipation, I would say. Energy dissipation because the damper has a coefficient D and um, similar to spring, we have kinetic or potential energy stored in the spring is half KS. I would say potential energy in the spring is half K X gear and so on. So, and what is this Q, the right hand side? Q, J's are the general, uh, the forces or torques, forces or torques depends if this is a linear system these are forces if this is an angular system these are the torques and if you have two system for uh, two uh, masses you have two generalized co coordinates two usually two generalized coordinates so for example this q sub j are the generalized coordinates q small q are the we call the generalized coordinates um before i go okay let's do uh, one more uh, quick uh, overview about the generalized co coordinates i'm going to copy and paste some of the pictures here As you can see, the the first figure is telling us that the mass of this pendulum can be traced by the rectangle coordinates as well as x and y, but it can also be traced completely by Theta. So we will prefer the generalized generalized coordinate would be theta for this case. And the coordinates that you can use for the system on the right hand side, the coordinates may be used as like x and theta. So I will say x and theta are the generalized coordinates for this uh, second system. 
Similarly, if I show you one more example or a few more examples here. So you may have to think. So you can see here that the generalized coordinates for for this system over here, we just need two, one degree of freedom is this one, one degree. So theta one and theta two, they completely define the motion of the two pendula. So they can be they can be used as generalized coordinates. And similarly for this system, the coordinates will be X1 and X2. They can be used as for uh, generalized coordinates. So one, a few more things here. I want to show you. Now, in this case, this one is either X or theta. So either X or theta can be used to completely define the motion since X equals to R theta they, or vice versa. You can find out theta equals to X over R as a generalized coordinates. So one degree of freedom. So over here on the right hand side, this has multiple degrees of freedom. So what you can see, this one has infinite number of masses like it in a string. We it's known as continuous system. In continuous system, we we have uh, infinite number of degrees of freedoms. So when the time comes, I will teach you maybe in coming chapter how to how to find the differential equation of motion of a string or of a cord or of a rope. Hopefully after maybe two weeks from today. So let's use one example, then we can start here. So let's use the basic example is. This is the degree of freedom. And I'm going to use the Lagrangian here, which is kinetic energy minus uh, potential energies. <clears throat> and the dissipation energy is half C uh, X dot square. So let me grab this equation for Lagrangian. Uh -huh. Uh, Lagrange's equation here. And let's go slowly, slowly to complete this. I will show you both uh, methods. So let's see, first of all, um, the Newton's second law to completely define this equation of motion here. These are the two equations. So this is the free body diagram with the, this is our degree of freedom here. So all the forces, they are equal to mass times acceleration. And this is the our um, conventional method which we have been studying here. So kinetic energy, in this case, we don't need the free body diagram. For the Lagrange's equation, we don't need the uh, free body diagram. We just need the how many masses are there. Can you take a look? This is just one mass. So all the masses, they possess kinetic energy. Half m x dot square. And the potential energy is stored into this in this in the spring here, half k x uh, square. And the energy dissipates in the damper, which is written as half uh, c x 
dot square. And now let's use this method. So I'm going to uh, the generalized coordinate here. It is just one generalized coordinate, which is which is actually the same coordinate, which which is completely defined the motion of this uh, uh, mass. So whatever the actual degree of freedom, it is also the generalized coordinate in this case. So what I'm going to show you here, let's go. What is L? L equals to half. MX dots minus half. This is dots, OK? Half K X square. And now let's do the math here. Partial derivative with respect to X dot because our Q one is X. So we have to take if you take a look the partial derivative with respect to the X dot value for this Lagrangian. So I'm going to take the partial der derivative of this. So only this is uh, one which is having the velocity term here. So this goes to zero. The partial of this one is zero. But partial for this one is two times. X dot. So this is canceled by this one. So then you have to take the time derivative of this term again. So that is the time derivative. And now let's talk about the second term over here. This is a our partial by partial q dot, which is so we have to partial by partial x dot of the dissipation energy. So let's take partial by partial x dot half uh, c x dot square. So one half is constant outside the partial sign. So c uh, two times x dot. So you are left with c x dot for the second term, uh, this second term here. And let's go for the negative sign here, partial L by partial Q sub J. So partial L by partial X. Q sub J means X in our case here. L is, this is the whole, um, a whole equation is the Lagrangian. We call this as a Lagrangian. So partial by partial X, this is partial, let me rewrite here partial derivative of with respect to s so one half m x dot square one and a half x square so this term goes to zero because this is not having any x variable so it goes to zero but the next term the partial derivative is with respect to x is half is outside the parenthesis k is outside so two times x so you're left with uh, kx, so negative kx. So let's use our um, equation. So if I use the equation here, which is time derivative of Lagrangian like partial by partial x dot plus partial by partial x dot or d minus partial l over partial x equals to uh, q um here let me write down with a big q so that you sh should not worry about here there is no external applied force like here if it is f this f would be considered as the applied force let's assume this is being applied here for uh, making it more generalized like f is the applied force here so let's do this so what is this answer here so it is mx double dot for this one, it is CX dot minus minus KX. So it would be plus KX equals to F. So you see the same equation of motion you can derive using the Lagrange equation or using the equation of motion. Sometimes it is easier to use the Lagrange equation because um, because sometimes uh, in the free body diagram, we make some mistakes. So it's up to you, whatever. Uh, whatever you like to use a method, how would you draw? So let's use one more a question here. Have you understood this question? Yes. 
Okay, let's do one problem here. Uh, in our book, we have, yes. So we have this problem. In this case, we have uh, two masses. One is the mass of this translation uh, motion, and the other mass is this pendulum. The center of gravity represents the motion of the pendulum, and over here, this is. So the, let's see the generalized coordinates. So X and theta would completely define the motion of these um, two systems. I would say X1 or X, this, this is X1 here. So let's use X1 comma theta. It completely defines the motion of the two uh, different bodies. So uh, Lagrangian says that kinetic energy minus potential energy, this is the Lagrangian, and C damper is also involved here. So the damper is half C X, X1 dot square. Let me, let me copy the and paste the Lagrange equation here. Now, since we have two generalized coordinates, so we will have to use um, one and two, like uh, partial L by partial um, Q one dot. In our case, this Q Q one dot can be assumed like X one dot. And this is for force is being applied here, so it would be F um, for this case. So this is the equation, first equation for the Q1. So for the second generalized coordinate, which is theta, we have to use the same equation. Now theta, theta dot. Here we don't have any damper in this case, so I will say just this is zero, so negative. Do we have any torque? Yes, torque is being applied to this uh, pendulum. So this is the second equation of uh, motion derived from the from the Lagrange's equation. So now the next step is to just plug in what is the Lagrangian for the for the D, uh, these two bodies. So let's go ahead and do this together. So Lagrangian, as you know, it is K minus kinetic energy. So K equals to like this is kinetic energies are possessed by the masses. So we have, do we have the mass of this pendulum? The, Small m represents the mass of the pendulum. 
and you always take the mass from the center of the rod or the shape center of mass so that mass is uh, moving towards here so okay now let's see k equals to half this is the kinetic energy of this uh, mass and the kinetic energy though of the pendulum is half mv to square so here in this case this is velocity of this uh, like a tangential velocity so you remember v uh, sub 2 it is the combination mm, so i will say i will say you can remember of pythagoras theorem so if i take this uh, like this x is as x and y i would say x sub 2 y sub 2 then using the pythagoras theorem you can use this x sub 2 square plus y sub 2 square and but i'm going to solve it in a bit but this is let's go slowly and uh, what is the another kinetic energy due to the rotation of this pendulum half times mass moment of inertia times theta uh, dot square this is complete um, kinetic energy of the two um, masses here so i was talking about this v2 we want to replace it in terms of x1 and theta because we are dealing with x1 so can you replace this v2 by in terms of generalized coordinates that's our objective so let's let's go ahead and let me grab this one here and uh, write it down here so x2 if you take a look here this is my x1 from this uh, datum line. This is my x1. And then we have this position a theta dot. So this one is a, the center of mass is at a distance a from this origin or the axis of rotation. So I'm gonna use this as my point x2 if you closely look this is my x2 here so can i write down x2 So what is x2 dot? Well, the velocity is x2 dot because I mentioned, sorry, this is x2 dot scale. It's not x2, but x2 dot and y2 dot because uh, this is a lot of time differential here. A cosine theta times theta dot. This is x2 dot. And uh, what is my y2 value here? This is my y2 up until here, which is a cosine theta. Minus a cosine theta going down this upward okay this is minus a thank you so this is minus a
So now we have to find out what is V2 dot V2 uh, square according to this uh, Pythagoras theorem. So let's add all these together x1 dot plus a theta dot cosine theta plus a, I will say square. Oh, one second. This is whole square here. Uh, let me erase this bracket here and make it again. Y2 is, is positive A. This one? Uh, yeah, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is positive. A sine theta. Thank you. So now we have done this work. Then we can simplify it by like it's two terms like a plus b whole square, a square plus b square plus 2ab. So let's do this one x1 dot square plus two times a theta dot cosine theta times x1 dot plus a2. A square cosine square theta plus this square of this one is a square theta dot square sine square theta. So if you take a look, a square theta dot square is outside the parentheses cosine square theta plus sine square theta. This is equal to one as an identity. So we can rewrite the velocity of this pendulum square in terms of simplified version x1 dot square plus two That's a two. so this is my velocity of this pendulum translational velocity. So if you take this kinetic energy again, let me grab this one and simplify using this V square in terms. Now you see V square is in terms of generalized coordinates. That's a good thing. So we can rewrite this term. Uh, M plus M. I'm just simplifying along with this plus m a x one dot theta dot cosine theta plus half m a scale plus i this is the kinetic energy in the form of uh, uh, generalized coordinates now the system potential energy is due to the spring and the vertical displacement of the center of mass of the pendulum. So, so taking the potential energy to be zero when y2 equals to negative a. So let's see. So I can write down the potential energy of this. This is the weight acting downward. So what is the PS? Let's see the stored energy into the spring is half K. X1 square. Now P sub G potential energy due to the gravity. K 
can be written in terms of this is the I can write down. Um, let's use this center. <coughs> How much it is lifted here? So MG. So if we consider this point here, so this point is goes like this. So this is the height here. So it is a minus a cosine theta. Like this is my a, and then this is my a cosine theta. So it's mg a one minus cosine theta. So now L equals to k minus p. So we already have this k as equation one and p is equation number two actually this is a summation i would say is summation of ps plus pg so we already have written down the dissipation energy did we yes we already wrote down this one so we are good to plug in the in this equation lagrangian um lagrange's equation to find the equation of motion so now you will help me so let's do the L equals to this is my K. Minus P, which is PS half K X one scale. Let me show you this is my ps correct and p sub g is minus mga one minus cosine theta so now we can now do the partial by partial x1 dot so let's q1 equals to x1 so let's do this delta uh, partial by partial x1 dot here. So only x1 dot is in this first term. So I can write down, you have to differentiate here, differentiate here, and the remaining terms are zero because they don't have x1 dot in those uh, terms. So we will just write down half time derivative, sorry, spatial derivative is this one. So you are left with this. And. Uh, 2 X 1 now if you take one more step, uh, let me do this next step later on. So let me show you here. Now the. Partial derivative for this one is. M a theta dot cosine theta because x1 dot the partial derivative of x1 dot is one agreed because so then you have to take the time derivative of this term so let's do it on top of it so it would be like time derivative of this one it would be m plus m So now here comes the derivative of two terms here. It would be like a first function into the derivative of second function. The second function, uh, I would say second function into the derivative of first function. These are double two. So then you will multiply by ma so it's a negative sign so it should be negative sign here for the first term let me rewrite here 
negative m a theta dot square sine theta plus m a theta double dot cosine theta agreed so this is what we have as this let's assume this is equation number uh sorry this is our not equation one we, we still have to do the second term which is partial d or partial x1 dot which is partial a partial x1 dot one half c x1 dot square which is c x1 dot now the potential energy we have to take the third term this is partial l by partial uh, partial l by partial x1 so the same equation this term does not have uh, x in it the second term we don't need to differentiate third term is also zero only this term we will pick up okay only this term the remaining terms will go away minus one half uh, sorry this is k uh, k x1 square and that is equal to minus k x1 so we have finished this one so let's complete the first equation of motion let me grab this lagrange's equation here and do the math here i'm going to grab all these terms here for your help here this is my first term and the second term is plus cx dot c and uh, this one c x1 dot third term is negative times this is negative coming from the equation and this has negative uh, in this term so it would be positive k x1 equals to f because this is under the generalized uh, sorry the force is being applied so the right hand side is not equal to zero but q1 equals to f let me show you q1 equals to f q2 in this case this is torque so now this is the complete equation of motion for the for the first mass let's change the um what we call the second use the same equation lagrange's equation for when j equals to when j equals to two that means q two equals to theta so we will grab this l lagrangian and we will grab this and do the differential again let me remove this one so now q sub 2 so the equation of motion is this one so i'm going to use this partial l by partial theta dot for this one so this term goes to zero the first term is zero. Second term is plus m a x one dot cosine theta. And the third term is theta dot square. So I'm going to write down half. Let's write down like i m plus m a square two times theta dot. Agreed. Now the third term is zero. So don't worry about the third term and the fourth. Term. So the remaining term goes to zero. So then you have to take the time derivative here. So M A. x1 double dot theta and plus half 
i plus m a square. This half is cancelled by the, the two in the numerator. In the second term, um, you got to take uh, the derivative of theta. Uh, second term, this one? No, m a x one dot cosine theta. You got to do the chain rule. Yep. It's x one is the time derivative, and then theta time derivative. Oh yeah. So this this you have to apply the chain rule here. Yeah, product rule. It's also known. So let's do the product rule here. Let me. Sorry. So let's do this over here. M A outside. So first function into the derivative of second function. Plus second function into the derivative of uh, second function into the derivative of the first function, which is x one double dot. Now this is the time derivative of this one, and the next one you just take the like one half like i plus m a square theta double dot. So if I simplify this m a x one double dot cosine theta and then i plus m a square double dot m a sine theta x one dot Theta dot. So sometimes we'll cancel. Let's see. Now let's do the second term. In the second case, we don't have damper for the second equation. For the second one, we don't have damper, but we do have potential energy. So let's use the second case here. Let me grab this equation again. This is our main equation, which you should write down in your formula sheet. This is one half, okay? So, Partial by partial, partial by partial theta. This one goes. This is my x. Um, sorry, this one. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not. This one is x dot square. Okay, now we're good. So partial by partial theta. This one, the first term goes to zero. Now the second term is m a x one dot theta dot minus sine theta. And then third term goes to zero. Fourth term is zero. And the fifth term is minus m g a minus or minus minus become positive. That's it. OK. So if you do. This term and this term, they cancel out. I'm just doing it over here for your help. So this term is left out M G A. Signs here, the right hand side is Q J Q J in our case Q sub two equals to the torque. So let me write down the complete equation. It would be starting from here, m a x double dot x one double dot cosine theta. 
plus i plus m a square theta double dot then you are left with minus sign because this negative sign in this negative sign will become positive okay m g a sine theta equals to the torque this is the second equation this was a lengthy problem but it it worked out nicely that we did slowly so let me grab the results from our from our book so the equation first equation of motion is let me get this grab the whole equation here so it is verifying that this is the answer for that now let's do one more uh, section here i want to teach you what are the modes and the system responses so let me show you 6.3 section number 6.3 these sections are lengthy but when you go home you can revise i'm going to upload this lecture on a youtube for your help or even it is there on the microsoft teams you can check what we are learning so let's see over here this is the two degrees of freedom Now the equation of motion, I can write down using the mass um, free body diagram. This is my x1, this is my force minus k1, x1. This is my force minus k2, this is k2, okay? x1 minus x2. And the other mass, I can draw the free body diagram here. When this mass moves to the right and the forces of the spring, they resist the motion on the to the left uh, side. So X3, X2, and this is minus K2, X2 minus X1. This is M2. And if you do the math here, this is M1, like all the forces are equal to mass times acceleration. For this one, so let's do, I will say let's do for the other one. Let's draw two equation of motion simultaneously. On the left hand side, you will write down minus K1, X1, minus K2. And there is no external force being applied on it. So on the right hand side, and the other equation is minus k2 x2 minus x1 minus k3 x2 m2 x2 double dot. Now assume that the the free response here so if i do the free response here simple harmonic motion Let's say it's A.
the taking the Laplace transform everything. I'm going to write down the final shape here. So let me show you the. Is it ST or minus ST? Um, it is ST and okay. it could be uh, if it is growing, it should be positive. It is if it is negative, it's decaying. So let me show you the. It depends characteristic rules of the equation. So let me show. Mm -hmm. It depends upon our roots, the imaginary roots. So let me show you over here, K1. If I rewrite the equation here, M1 X1 double dot plus K1 plus K2 X1 minus K2 X2 equals to zero. Let me take the Laplace. M1 square. Replace S by uh, plus minus J omega. So we can rewrite this equation here. So the ratio. X2 over X1. So if I write down X2, um, X1 over X2. Let's write down X2 over X1. That would be equal to M. The negative sign. These are the mode ratios. And from this equation, if you plug in the same thing, I'm going to write down um, the mode ratio for the second case. It may be a different displacement for the second case. You will be seeing here K1. Oh, this is second. Shouldn't that be inverted? Isn't K2 on top? And then K2 for the second case? When you move K2 over and then divide by your x1 I, don't know. I thought k2 would be on top oh this one is for omega 1 and omega 2 this is for the same equation um this is a uh, when we plug in there are two values of um s so one is at a fundamental frequency maybe um maybe i can I can show you in the equations. Let's do one problem uh, for a second. Let me show you one problem. Let's do one problem. And then we can understand more clearly in this case. So let's go ahead and do this problem. And over here. The same um, system is the same one.
So let's grab this equation of motion here. I want to take this equation of motion. And the other equation of motion here. We already have done work, so we don't need to redo this. The, so the question is find the, and interpret the mode ratios. Mode ratio in the big picture is that if one mass moves to the right, what is the location of the other mass at a certain frequency? We call those eigenfrequencies or natural frequencies. These are the mode shapes. I'm going to show you uh, or mode ratios. So what are the mode ratios? Suppose if one is moving to the right, what is the mode ratio uh, for the other mass? So let me show you over here what you have to do. You have to assume that x1 equals to a1 e to the st, which is a simple harmonic motion e to the st. Let's plug it in in the in these equations, so you're left with one m one s square plus two k. Since the k values are same, plus two k. For the second case, you plug it in over here, so you're left with minus k. A1, M2, this is equation number two. Now, I would like to find out what is the um, root, what are the values here, what are the roots? So let's take the one step back and write down in terms of a two by two matrix. So two by two matrix, this is M1 S square plus two K minus K. Here it would be minus K. This is M2 S square plus two K equals to zero, zero. So in this equation, now we are in a, in a good position to find out the determinant. Either this A equal to zero in order to get the right hand side zero, which cannot be because if it is zero, it means the amplitude of mass A, mass this one and amplitude of this one is equal to zero, which is not correct. They are moving a certain vibration. So only the determinant or the left hand side, this is M1. From here, we can find out the determinant and then we can find out the value of uh, the roots. So if you do the math, you will get, I will say, let me, I'm gonna skip a little bit here because this you can do at home. And so I can write down omega one equals to square root K over M, omega two equals to square root three K over M. And if you take a look from this equation, like equation two, let me grab this one. I want to find out the ratio of the two uh, amplitudes. These are the mode ratio. So let me show you. I want, I'm interested in A2 over A1 at a certain frequency, at maybe um, at omega one equals to square root K over M. So what are the values? So let me rewrite here. So if I show you, a2 over A1. Is this correct? Yes.
So let me grab this one M2 M asker. So this is correct for the first second equation. Let's do for the first equation. What is the ratio? Let's start. We can either use the S first or second equation, it doesn't matter. So let me check it. What is the mode ratio from this this equation A2 or A1 A equal to? Now, in our case, the masses are same. If you take a look, masses are same in first case, but second case, uh, the masses are different. So let's plug in S square. What is S square equals to? In our case, this is S, mm, S is equal to J omega. So S square equals to K over M. This is our equation. Uh, I will say omega square equals to S square. So let's plug it in over here so I can write down M, not M1, just M, M, M times omega square. Oh, sorry, this is K. What I'm doing here. This is not two. This is K. Two minus one. This is negative sign because if you take a look here, S square equals to J omega. And omega one equals to the negative sign here so it should be two minus one so it should be one so that means if you if you move the mass m1 to the right one centimeter with the amplitude a1 to the right the other mass also moves one centimeter to the right so the ratio is they are they're also known as the uh, rigid body mode uh, we also call it, they, they both move like a single body, um, rigid body mode. And when we plug in, uh, when we plug in second omega, which is square root uh, 3k over m, I believe, square root 3k over m, in the same equation, a2 over a1, When you plug it in over here, S square is negative sign because of J square is negative sign 3K over M times M. So this means that if mass M moves to the right with the one, one centimeter mass move to the left with one centimeter. So if you want to plot the both modes on an axis, so the first mode when omega one is smaller frequency, they are both at one centimeter. Like suppose suppose the initial displacement is one centimeter for the one mass M1 and M1 M2, the amplitude is also one centimeter and if you want to draw the for the second mode which is k root 3k over k over m so one mass moves to the one centimeter the other mass moves one centimeter below the mean position so it would be so there will be a node here so let me grab the picture here So oh, this is, I think I've finished this mode shapes. I will finish the lecture now and I'll see you next.